I'm Joe Sauer, intellectual property partner and member of the post-grant trial team at Jones Day. In this short video, I'm going to discuss the basic differences between the three types of proceedings created by the American Invents Act to challenge the validity of an issued patent at the Patent Trial and Appeal Board. These three types of proceedings are post-grant review proceedings, inter partes review or IPR proceedings, and covered business method or CBM proceedings. Procedurally, all three types of proceedings follow a similar path. This starts with the filing of a petition with the Patent Trial and Appeal Board that details the reasons for unpatentability and is typically supported by the declaration of an expert witness. The patent owner then has the option to file a preliminary response before the board issues its decision whether or not to institute a trial. If a trial is instituted, the proceedings will typically involve discovery of expert declarants, additional briefing by both the petitioner and the patent owner, and ultimately an oral hearing before the Patent Trial and Appeal Board. The differences between the three types of proceedings relate mainly to limitations on when each type of proceeding is available and the types of invalidity challenges that may be raised. A post-grant review petition can only be filed during the nine months following the issuance of a patent. Post-grant review proceedings are also limited to patents that were filed under the first inventor to file rules that went into effect under the America Invents Act in March of 2013. The effect of this restriction is that patents eligible for post-grant review are only recently beginning to issue from the Patent Office. When available, a post-grant review petition enables a party to challenge the patent on any ground that could have been raised as an invalidity defense in district court. This includes not only anticipation and obviousness over the prior art, but also challenges that the claims are indefinite or directed to non-statutory subject matter, as well as challenges directed to the sufficiency of the written description. Inter partes review petitions may be filed after a patent has been issued for nine months, that is, after the period for post-grant review. IPR proceedings are more limited than post-grant review proceedings in that they may only address the novelty or obviousness of the claims based on patents or printed publications. Also, if a petitioner is sued for patent infringement in district court, an IPR proceeding can only be filed within one year of service of the complaint, and an IPR proceeding may not be filed if the petitioner has already filed a declaratory judgment action alleging invalidity of the patent. A covered business method petition has the most restrictive filing requirements of the three types of proceedings. First, a CBM petition is only available for patents that claim a method or apparatus relating to a financial product or service and are not directed to technological inventions. Further, a CBM may only be filed by a party that has already been charged with infringement of the patent. Also, CBMs were enacted as a temporary procedure and will only be available through 2020. If available, however, a CBM petition may be used to challenge the patent on any ground that may be raised as an invalidity defense, just like in a post-grant review proceeding. If you would like more detailed information on post-grant review, IPR, or CBM proceedings at the Patent Trial and Appeal Board, please see the written materials posted to our blog site or contact a member of the Jones Day post-grant trial team.